Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Phil from Practical Media 101. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use the C Art AI online application in order to generate amazing AI images for absolutely free. Before getting started, please subscribe to my channel and turn on your bell notifications and give this video a giant thumbs up. So without any further ado, let's get started. First thing that you have to do is that you have to come into the C Art AI website. You will be greeted with this particular page right here. And now you have to create a free account. In order to create this account, please go into the top right hand section and click on the login button. From here, you can select any of these options that you want to. The easiest would be to sign up using Google. So I'm going to be signing up using my Google account. So once you're inside of here, you have to select a nickname and then you have to select all the things that you're interested in. Once you select all of these, you have to confirm your age and click on start using. Once you have done this, your account will be created and you can now start creating free and beautiful AI images. So now that we have created our free account, let's go ahead and navigate to the image generation page and let's see exactly how that page works. In order to go to the generation page, just click on this particular blue button right here called generate. And uh, when this pop-up appears, simply click on remind me later. So this is the image generation plane and we can pretty much start creating different kinds of images from inside of here this is the prompt window where we can define what kind of images we want to generate and these are the different like uh, options available in order to edit existing images i'm going to be showing you each and every single one of these options later on uh, not in this particular video i'm going to be creating separate videos for these uh, if you want me to create like a full tutorial wherein I will cover all every single one of these options, then uh, you can ask me in the comment section and I'll be sure to create a video about those. But uh, in today's video, I'm just going to be showing you all the basic features and I'm going to be running you through quickly uh, what this particular application is capable of. All right. So the first and most important thing that you have to realize about this particular tool right here is that it is based on the stable diffusion model. And uh, stable diffusion actually takes in a lot of image models in order to generate it, its images. And depending on the type of model that you choose the output on which that you are generating a particular prompt, uh, like if you put in a particular prompt and if you want a certain kind of image to come, the output will differ according to the model that you are using. And uh, if you go to the top right hand section, you'll be able to see within the general settings that uh, the model that we have currently selected is the epic realism model. We can switch this model if we want to. We can come here into the switch button and uh, we can explore more models here and uh, we can use them now different kinds of models can be used for different kinds of purposes all of these models right here they are good for generating images of people especially women if you use this particular model right here magic mix it's good for generating like images of asian women if you use this particular model right here it's good for generating like cartoonistic uh, images of women and uh, other people so you can use different kinds of models for your specific purpose there are also some nsfw models right here which you can use uh, if you're trying to generate like adult content if you want to uh, so different kinds of models can be used for different purposes but uh, since this video i'm going to be just covering the basics i'm going to be using the default model which is epic realism and uh, i can show you pretty much what this would work like so let me go ahead and generate uh, the first ever image uh, related to this model now i can put whatever prompt here that i like to and i can pretty much define what kind of image i want to generate so let's go ahead and let put this let's put this prompt let's imagine i'm going to be generating a photo of this dog uh, he's walking in the park and he has like brown fur and he's playing with the ball so let me just type that in dog walking in park brown fur and uh, I can generate like uh, the image of this particular dog. Now, uh, if you are going to be writing like prompts in the real life, you would want them to be a little bit more definitive. Like you want to add more details in there. Uh, this is not a good prompt by any means. You have to generate like good detailed prompts in order to get like good images. So make sure of that. I am only putting in this prompt right here to show you. So, but if you are going to be creating, if you're going to be generating images in real life, you would want to make more descriptive prompts. So I put in this particular prompt right here. Now, once I put this in right here, without, before, before like I uh, 
generate images using it. I have to tweak some of the settings right here inside of the this particular section. Now I discussed about the model. I'm going to be using the Epic Realism model here, which is a good model for generating images of people. I'm going to be trying and uh, generating the image of this particular dog and let's see how this works. I can also add a Laura here if I like to, but uh, let's leave that for the time being. I can also add a mode here. Let's keep it by default. The amount of images that I want to generate, let's keep it at two. I can also take it up to a maximum of, of four. The image settings, okay. Uh, I can generate a high quality image if I want to, and uh, I can generate a very high quality image or a standard image. Now, depending on the one that I choose, the cost of the generation would vary. Now this cost here, this is particularly important for you to notice because the cost of generation would, uh, like each generation would cost you a certain amount of tokens. And uh, every day you only have like 150 tokens for free with CART Online. So make use of these tokens uh, wisely because you only have a limited amount of them. If you, if you run out of them in a particular day, you'd have to top up uh, on your CART account and you'd have to pay in order to like get more tokens tokens so just keep that in mind okay so that aside now the image quantity is 2 the image generation type is standard we can change the image size if we want to we can change any one out of these or we can put our own customization here and we can type in whatever like width and height that we want to I think there is a limit on around 600 768 if I try to put 1000 here it might just take me to yeah okay so the the maximum width that i can put in is 512 let me try putting in 1000 here okay so the maximum that i can put in here is 512 i can't generate images more than that this must be in standard quality it's seen high okay in high quality i can generate images up to 768 and in ultra high quality I can generate images up to 1204 1024 sorry so yeah, I can change the image size according to there. I can go to advanced prompts. Now this is of particular importance right here. You need to add negative prompts because what happens is that most of the time when you try to generate images with AI, what would end up happening is that uh, if you generate images of people, for example, they might have like extra fingers, they might have like two heads and they might have some other deformities. So in order to avoid that, you would have to specify a number of negative prompts here. Then uh, there is the sampling steps. Uh, it is ideal to keep the sampling steps anywhere from 25 to 30. So I'm just going to be increasing the sampling steps to around 26. And that is ideal. Then there is the CFG scale. We're not going to be discussing that here. But there is the seed right here. This is particularly important. So if we are using the same prompt and if we set a certain seed, then it's going to be generating the same image over and over again. So we'd have to change the seed time in and time again. But if, if it is set by minus one, then it's going to be random every single time. Then there's the advanced repair options. You can choose this to re restore faces when you're creating characters. Uh, yeah, this is particularly effective if you like uh, generate a certain amount of images of people. And if you want the next batch of images to have the same features, the same face, the same body, the same hair and all, then you would want to like enable this particular option here. It's going to be costing you more. It's going to be costing you like some amount of uh, tokens in order to enable. But yeah, you have the option to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate our first ever image. Enough discussed. Uh, I'm going to be clicking on this particular button right here. And this would go into queue. Now let's see what this would look like after it's finished. Okay, so now I'm back after a very short break. And apparently the application has finished creating our first ever images. So there are two images that have been generated. Let's go ahead and check them out. So first image looks kind of like this. And the second image looks like this. Now, what you'll be able to see in the second image is that there is some kind of deformity on this girl's face. And one more thing that you would be noticing is that inside of our prompt, we never mentioned a human being. But for some reason, it's giving a human being here. And uh, what this goes ahead and shows you is that this particular model right here is not the best model in order to generate images of animals. And on top of that, we can see is that there is some problem in our prompt. That's the reason why it is like uh, giving these human beings right here. Now, if we want to avoid these human beings total on, like full on, what we can do is that we can go into the negative prompt window. And there are all these negative prompts 
already like mentioned here on top of this what we can do is that we can add a comma right here and we want to add humans here in the negative prompt people as well okay so let's try generating this particular image again and let's see if that would work okay so the images have been generated but for some reason the human beings are still appearing within the photos so what it goes ahead and shows you is that this particular model right here is definitely not good in order to generate the images of animals so let's give up on the mission of generating images of dogs instead let's try generating images of women because it's like it gives you photos of women when you ask for dogs right let's try to see what kind of images it would generate when we are generating images of women so let's go ahead and let me put a prompt like this like smiling woman beautiful sunny day let's try generating this but also this let me show you this fun thing that uh, you can do here in order to make your prompt better on top of having this particular prompt what you can do in order to make this better is that you can come and click on this particular magic wand and using the power of ai it would like add more things into your prompt and it would make the prompt better as you'll be able to see it's much more detailed than ever before so you can use this in order to generate these images. So let me click on the button right here. And as you're able to see, it has generated these particular images of the woman. And they look fine, but in the second image, there's some kind of problems. But we can ignore these particular problems for the time being, because many of the images that will be created in the AI image generation process will have these kinds of issues. So you can pretty much ignore the images that have these issues and just focus on the ones that don't have any issues whatsoever. Now imagine you have this particular image right here and you think that it looks good. Now the quality for it by default is set on low. Uh, which is like around 768 pixels and around 512 uh, pixels. So if you want to upscale this particular image, then uh, CART AI actually provides you two different ways through which you can upscale this particular image. You can either creative upscale this image, which would add more finer details into this particular image, or you can simply upscale it. And uh, simply upscaling it will only take like two generation points, while creative upscale would take around four or five. Uh, four or six okay so you can use any of these i'll show you either of them and how to do them so if you want to creative upscale this image so you can simply come here and click on creative upscale and it will go into creative upscale mode let's see what this would look like So after the creative upscale, this is what the image looks like. Now, if you are able to notice, then you will see that it has much more detail and much more refinement as compared to the image earlier. So it looks much better and this can be added into your social media posts if you want to. Now, if you don't want to refine the image or add more details to it, but simply want to increase the resolution for the existing image, then you can use the upscale method instead of creative upscale. Let me show you exactly how this would work. Okay, so this is what the upscaled image would look like. The only difference between this and the earlier image is that this has more resolution as compared to earlier. Now, let me go ahead and show you another neat feature that CART AI provides you, which is the background removal option. Let me go ahead and show you what this would look like. So as you can see, the background from this particular image has been completely removed and it has been done so perfectly. This is the power of CART AI. Now, let's go ahead and check out how to use the image to image generation feature inside of CART AI. Now we have been generating all these image using this just text prompts. You can also have the option to generate images using other images. So in that particular option, what you would do is that you would use the input of a particular image. Then you would type in a text prompt defining how you want to manipulate that image and change it into a different image. And using the input of the image, the AI model is going to be generating something similar. So you can use this in order to like, you know, for a variety of purposes. Now I'm going to be showing you a fun use case of this particular feature. So first of all, I'm going to be going back into my, my PC section into the downloads folder. And you can see all these images right here. I have generated them using AI. So imagine I have this particular image right here and I want to change the photo of this particular young man into the face of a popular celebrity. 
how i can do that using the image to image generation feature so let me go back right here and let me click on drop an image and i'll choose this particular image and uh, imagine i want to change the uh, face of this tribal man into a popular actor maybe so let me select some inside of the text prompt i am going to be using a let's type in brad pitts maybe i'm going to put that there now let's wait for it to be finished now as you're able to see the face has been changed into the face of brad pitts it does not look exact of course but uh, again you can play around with it a little bit in order to make it perfect so that's one use case of using the image to image generation feature you can also find many other fun ways in order to use this particular feature right here but uh, i'm going to be leaving it on to that Okay, so now that we have covered all the basic features of CART AI, that will be all for today's video. I hope that you have learned something of value. And if you like the video, then consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. I'll be back with another video next week. Until then, adios.